In the opening scene, we see a meteor that strikes Earth's surface. It disperses numerous extraterrestrial parasites that are subsequently nourished by the flies and other insects. A scene unfolds where a fly lands on a man and begins sucking his blood. During this process, it ejects a microorganism into his bloodstream that swims deeper before reproducing more of it. The scene then cuts to the protagonist, Malik Khan, a US Marine. He wakes up in his secret facility and watches the news of escalating riots causing havoc in the city. It appears that the extraterrestrial and mind-controlling alien organisms have invaded the city, and they are infecting the population at a rapid pace. Just then, he notices some bugs entering his room through a small hole, so he immediately kills them with his spray. He also uses repellent spray on his body to stay away from the bites. Malik's body is tattooed with three names, J, Bobby, and Pia, the names of his sons and his ex-wife. Malik hasn't seen his family for the past two years because he has been out on a secret mission. Currently, Pia and the sons live at a farmhouse with her new partner, Dylan. Pia often tries to convince her elder son, Jay, to get along with his stepfather, but the boy doesn't seem to like him. Pia has been feeling sick lately, probably due to a mosquito bite, but Dylan takes it lightly, thinking that it's just a bug. Well, so was your father, dear, and look what he left me with. One night, Malik unexpectedly drives to his home and wakes up his two sons. He checks their eyes to see if there is any infection, and then urges them to join him on a supposed road trip. While getting ready, Jay notices a fallen chair in the kitchen, a sign of violence that might have happened there. However, he is so excited to go out with his father that he ignores it. While on the road, the kids ask about the destination but Malik evades the question, labeling it a surprise. Just then, the police car passes by, and Malik asks his boys to get down. They then pull over at a gas station to gather some supplies and refill their gas. While Malik is out, Jay goes through his stuff and sees a case study and some sketches about the mind-controlling bugs. Later on, the boy questions him about it, but Malik doesn't reveal too much. Hours later, they are pulled over by a patrolling police car. Though Malik is polite, the officer gets hostile and aggressive, indicating that he isn't in his correct state of mind. Right then, Malik sees something moving behind his eyes, and concludes that the cop has been infected by the parasitic organism, turning him into a pig skeeto. Sensing the imminent danger, he opts to leave, but the cop holds him at gunpoint. As a result, a physical brawl ensues between the two. Fortunately, Malik manages to knock the officer officer out before driving away. In the aftermath of this event, Malik confesses to his boys that this is not a road trip, but a mission to rescue humanity. The boys tuck and roll their asses out of the car, because now they know daddy's gone insane. He reveals that an alien parasite has taken control over the planet, and their mother has been infected as well. He asserts that as much as half the population has been infected by this alien parasite, Parasite, which is using human bodies to reproduce. Malik emphasizes their need to get to a secure facility where scientists are attempting to find an antidote for the alien onslaught. In the interim, they must exercise extra caution and safeguard themselves from the parasites using bug spray, which acts as a protective barrier. That's lucky. The two boys seem to be scared by this revelation, but they agree to accompany their dad in the mission. Their next stop is a grocery store, where Malik instructs Jay to watch over his brother while he goes to buy some supplies. During this time, an unusual looking woman approaches the car, frightening the children and prompting them to run inside the store. Malik manages to calm them down and instructs them to maintain a low profile to avoid drawing attention. As they continue their journey on the road, the boys reveal that their mother had been acting strange lately, experiencing morning sickness and eating weird food combinations. Hearing this, Malik has a sudden realization that she might have been pregnant with a baby or with 
bugs. He promptly pulls over the car and steps out to call his parole officer named Hattie. Here, it is revealed that Malik has been missing for a while now. He refuses to tell Hattie about his whereabouts, but he asks her to check on his ex-wife and her partner, whom he has locked up in a garage. Afterwards, Hattie takes the police to Malik's house and rescues Pia and Dylan. Later, while interrogating, Pia informs the authorities that Malik was doing weird things, like flashing the torch in her eyes and claiming that she was one of them. At this point, it is disclosed that the aliens aren't real and that Malik has kidnapped his children. We also learn that Malik had been seeing a psychiatrist, which indicates that he isn't mentally stable and that he has been imagining things about world destruction. That's wild. I was just joking earlier. The feds then talk to Hattie regarding her experience with Malik. In response, she tells them that he is a good and polite guy who loves his children more than anything and won't hurt them. However, the FBI agents don't believe this because he has a gun with him. Furthermore, they recount how Malik had once lost control and brutally injured his own senior officer, leading him to be imprisoned for two years. The agents then decide to track him down as soon as possible before anything bad happens. Later, the FBI heads, Lance Dunn and Shepard West, conduct a meeting at headquarters and form a team to locate Malik. They instruct their team to make all the necessary calls and scan every pixel of CCTV at every gas station. Shepard believes that Malik has now manipulated his children, and being a desperate man, he can turn on them at any moment. In the same evening, Hattie, who wants more insight into the case, visits a bar to meet Raul, a former Marine comrade of Malik. As they converse, Raul describes the assault incident that caused Malik to get dishonorably discharged from the Marine Corps. In addition, he shows her some of the letters and dark drawings he received from Malik. All of this makes her realize that Malik is suffering from a psychotic disorder, due to which he is having the alien attack hallucinations. On the other hand, Malik and his sons are still on their way to the secure facility, blasting T-Swift and eating popsicles. One night, they stop by a huge field-like area and camp under a big rock. While Bobby is sleeping, Jay and Malik recount some fun moments from the past. In the midst of their conversation, Malik sees hundreds of meteors in the sky and praises their beauty. The boy looks up, but finds nothing. It is at this time that Jay begins to suspect that there is something wrong with his father. Early the next morning, as the trio is preparing to resume their journey, they find that their car's tire is flat. Despite this, Malik continues to drive, hoping that they can find a place to fix it. Eventually, they come across a car in front of an old cabin. Malik sneaks into the place in search of the keys, but he is suddenly confronted by the owner. Because of this, the two get into a physical altercation. Both of them go back and forth for a while, but in the end, Malik manages to get away after knocking the man down. However, he is also injured in the process. Following this, Malik teaches Jay how to drive in order to get them to safety. After several hours of driving, they arrive at a deserted mining town of Las Lunas and spend the night in an abandoned house. The next morning, while Malik sleeps off his injury, Jay drives off to get his father medicine and food. Upon arriving at a store, the owner notices Jay's nervous face and senses something amiss. His suspicion further raises when the boy hands him a note with some blood stains. He then follows Jay to the car and offers to help if he is in danger. However, the boy pretends to be fine and drives away. On his way back, he overhears on the radio that his father is a wanted man for kidnapping his two children. He also realizes that his father has misled them about his two-year secret mission. In reality, he was imprisoned in Leavenworth for beating up his senior. Meanwhile, the old man's sons, Dwight and Kurt, arrive at the cabin and find him lying down unconscious on the floor. After calling an ambulance, the two of them set out to locate the person who attacked their father. When they spot his car en route, they start pursuing it. Back at the abandoned house, Jay angrily confronts his father, demanding answers. With no options left, Malik finally confesses that he lied about 
about being on a secret mission. He also says that his brain has been playing tricks on him. Before they can discuss further, Dwight and Kurt take Bobby hostage and threaten Malik to surrender himself. When the latter slowly opens the door, they open fire, forcing him to retreat. After instructing Jay to stay hidden, he rushes to the car, grabs his gun, and engages in a firefight with them. He eventually manages to save Bobby and apprehend both men without killing them. After this, he steals their car and escapes with his boys. Dad's doing a pretty good job. Maybe the aliens are real. Yeah, it's the rest of the Marines who are wrong. This incident makes Malik realize that he is a threat to his own children. As a result, he stops by a phone booth and calls Pia. He gives her the address of a diner, saying that he will be leaving the kids there. Pia tries to persuade him to surrender, but he refuses to go back to prison. He then bids a final goodbye to his children and continues his road trip. He's heading to Disney World to fulfill his lifelong dream of meeting Donald Duck. A while later, the FBI agents, along with Hattie, arrive at the diner, but they only find Bobby. It turns out that Jay is still in Malik's car, hiding in the back seat. Seeing him, Malik shouts at him, emphasizing that he is supposed to be with Bobby. However, Jay responds that Bobby is not the one who needs him. Now, the FBI agents and the police are behind them, chasing in their cars and helicopters. After a long and intense chase, the authorities surround them and hold the car at gunpoint. Shepard walks out and calls Malik, politely asking him to surrender. He also lets him talk to Hattie, who is the only person he trusts. She insists to Malik that the authorities will take his mental health into consideration consideration when deciding his fate. She also urges him to send the boy out of the car, but Jay refuses to abandon his father, even after an hour-long standoff with the police. Malik then apologizes to Jay for being an irresponsible father who endangered his children. He breaks down in tears, but the boy consoles him by saying that he is still his hero. Amidst their emotional conversation, Malik notices the FBI trying to sneak up to him. So, he loses his temper and opens fire in the air. Thankfully, Jay manages to calm him down and takes the gun from his hand. Not wanting to lose his father, Jay runs out of the car and points a gun at the police. Fearing that his boy might get shot, Malik hastily jumps out of the car and tries to divert the authorities' attention towards himself. As the intense situation escalates, Malik somehow manages to convince Jay to drop the gun and run to him. The movie ends as the father and son embrace with the police lowering their weapons. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.